Hi, this is Asher, and sit. And Asher is just learning how to not be aggressive. Really. He's, we've got him training for not for too much aggression. Nope. And part of what he does is he'll come at people when you're on the when they're on you're on the leash and there's something new. He'll come forward really fast. And so we're trying to teach him not to lunge like that. And what you do is you start with the command heel, which means walk on my left hand side. Don't pull ahead, don't pull behind, and sit every time I stop. That's the first command, and he learned that. Um, the next one is stay. Sit, stay, stay. That's a good boy. Now, okay means he's not under any command by me, but he does have to follow the general rules of conduct. One of which is don't attack the guy with a camera. <laughs> and so um, with those, with all of that, what we do then is we challenge him to, to resist the, the temptation to lunge forward at things and people and places and actions that he would be tempted to do by working with him while those action, while all of those things are distracting him. So we have him concentrating on his work, concentrating on how to behave, and then um, we correct him when he's doing wrong, when he's, when he's pulling ahead. If you know what to do with an aggressive dog, if you know how to train aggressive dogs, whether they're fear aggressive or dominant aggressive, it doesn't matter. If you know how to do it, it can not only can it be done successfully, and be a permanent part of the, this dog's life, but it also can be done much quicker than you would think. Um, when the trainer knows what she is doing, um, it can go, the training can go very quickly in this positive manner. I want people to know that. One thing that people, that pe one mistake people make is that if there's a problem with a dog, a dog is causing problems in the home, especially if it's aggress an aggressive problem. The people are thinking the, the problem is so complicated that the answer must be complicated also. But when you come to somebody like me, the answer is not complicated at all. It's very, very easy and it's very, very quick. You just have to have a professional trainer like me to do it. I don't know what it is about dogs and cameras. Most of them don't like them. See, the, the, here's the other thing about dogs is that they kind of, when they're, they come out here in the morning and they're in their, their yard and they're behind the gates and everything like that, and part of their job, job as being a dog is to protect their environment and their family. And so they naturally want to bark as people walk by or as the mailman comes or whatever it is. And so uh, what we have to do is we have to teach them what's, what's appropriate and what's not. And that um, comes with a lot of nuance. And dogs can do nuance very easily once they're trained. They can do, uh, they understand what that's enough means. In other words, we don't want to teach her not to bark at all. We don't want her to, to make her think that she cannot bark at all. We want to make sure that she just barks just the right amount. And then that's when the nuance comes in. That's when the training comes in. And we tell her enough. And then she ha she's, she's got to stop barking. <laughs> See, she's learning how to pay attention to other things and pay attention especially to me. And therefore she can calm down sort of 
because it's kind of like the atmosphere around her is like osmosis and it kind of makes her realize even unconsciously or subconsciously that the world is okay and you're this is not an instrument of mass destruction you're holding here this is just a camera and she looks pretty on camera sit nope good girl good girl the dilemma of having a dog um on the leash is that they're more combative when they when they meet human beings or other dogs so you want to for ideally you want to take them off the leash and see how they will behave and so what we do is we put them in this enclosed area we put and we take them off the leash and we, we put them together now there's a slight risk there because you don't have any control over both dogs if they're, if they're confronting each other or if they're running to the front gate or whatever it is they're doing drinking out of the bird bath <laughs> which the the birds never come close to anymore the dilemma is how do you control this dog who is now completely off the leash and we've got another dog coming in here to meet her how do you control that situation and there's different ways you can do it and most of my dogs when i when I, they're here for training i do about three lessons first as i'm doing that i'm getting them to listen to uh, my commands and seeing how quickly they respond to my commands and then when i feel safe is when i do it just in case though i have a couple of hoses and i have a couple of squirt cans um, or uh, plant sprayers. I never bring two aggressive dogs together off leash. I never do that. I don't want to take that chance. But we do have um, lessons where we do two, it's two trainers and two aggressive dogs together. And what, what that does is that they're both being taught not to go after each other. We work with them back and forth on the heel, which is what you saw out here. The he she was on a heel meaning walk on my left hand side and don't cross in front or back or anything else. And so what we're training the dogs to do there is not to go after the other dog. It usually takes about three or four times at passing and about the fourth, maybe fifth time that they pass, you start to see that they are looking away from each other rather than towards each other because it's almost like they're saying, if I look at this one, I'm gonna have to fight him. And if I fight him, I'm gonna get in trouble. So, uh, they, they, it's kind of funny, but I don't exactly know what they're thinking, but the bottom line is this, they go beside each other and they no longer wanna fight. They look away from each other. And eventually they, eventually they can either become pe uh, dogs who tolerate each other's company or good friends. And that's how you do it, two aggressive dogs. Okay, with aggressive dogs, what we need to do is we have to first figure out if it's fear aggression or dominant aggression. A lot of times it's, a, it's the combination of both. This is one of those dogs. Um, so what we have to do is we have to get them used to outdoors uh, surroundings, things that are, are distracting to him. After working with him on, on his basic obedience, we have to get him around things that are distracting and scary and noisy and things like that so he's used to everything that is surrounds him so that he doesn't think that everything is threatening to him sit nope sit good boy so he learns that he's not going to get killed by the for instance the garbage can guy the guy who uh, picks up the garbage cans he's not going to get killed by the gardener he's he's fine there are, all of this is fine you go to a store he's barking at everybody who's going in inside in and outside the store he doesn't have to worry about that anymore. But also, that's A. But B is, we're teaching him, even if you are afraid, even if you do want to go and attack whatever it is that's bothering you, making you nervous or making you feel like your space is being uh, violated, you are not allowed to act that way. So even if you're frightened, no matter what, you are not allowed to just go with your instincts and, and go after people or places or, or things. What you have to do is you still have to behave. That's just the way it is in the, in the world of human beings. When I was a little kid, my grandmother used to raise fox, ta uh, fox terriers. And she said that, she, that they hated people in uniform. And it, she, what she meant was the mailman, the UPS man. That way back then, she even had the milkman and the butterman. And so she, all these men were coming to the door, the back door, and they all wore uniforms. They were different uniforms, but they were still uniforms. And even at age seven, I was thinking, 
How do the dogs know it's a uniform? How is that possible? They don't know fashion. They don't even wear clothes. So how do they know that it's a uniform? And I kept asking her that, and she kept saying, I don't know, they just do. And so finally, when I started training dogs, I sort of figured it out. Here's what happens. The, dog, the, the mailman, let's say that your, your mail is a, a box right at your front door. The mailman comes to the front door. The dog runs and barks and barks and barks at him. The mailman delivers your mail, and he turns around and he goes away. Next day, same thing. The mailman comes to the door, the dog barks, the mailman turns around and goes away. So this means that the dog is successful. What he's trying to do is get rid of that man, and as soon as he starts barking, that man turns around and goes away. So he's thinking it's working. He thinks he's a rock star. So now anytime anybody comes to the door and he starts to bark and they turn away, that's what he's going to do. And so uh, it's all about results for dogs. They think about what works. And they do very well in figuring those things out pretty quickly.